Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and today I'm gonna to talk about some new series by my old favorite authors. So I don't know if you've noticed this about me, but I've noticed this about me, and I will pick up a series by authors, and then like I won't read anything else by them, I'll just continue reading like series that I know and love, and I'll stretch that out forever. Like it took me actual years to read The Censors. Um, I don't ever read them like back to back really. Sometimes I try, but like sometimes it takes me forever to read a series. And a lot of times I like to have all of the books in a series so then I can like read it slowly. I don't know. But I picked up three different series from authors that I already know that I love because I've already read like from them before, but I've only read in like one particular series. So, or maybe two particular series, but like I picked up a new series by those authors basically. So I picked up three. So the first one that I have is The Care and Taming of a Rogue by Suzanne Enoch. So this one is following Bennett and Flip. Bennett is an explorer. He has been exploring in Africa. And in the prologue, we find out that Bennett is no longer with us, that he has died on his explorations in Africa. But that's okay because his like friend that was traveling with him, who um, absolutely hates him, got all of his journals and everything and is going to write the book that Bennett would have written. Okay. Well, then we open up to Bennett and his pet monkey, Kiro, showing up in England to his friend's house. Coincidentally, his friend happens to be hosting, like, a book club where they're talking about his new book that is awful about him. And his friend is like, bro, we thought you were dead. One of the people that was at this particular book club is Philippa, who goes by Flip. And Flip is very, like, no-nonsense. She's very proper. And people aren't really falling at her feet. Instead, they are falling at her sisters. Um, Bennett's bestie is one of those people. So he is going to like the Africa Society and he's like trying to like let them know like I'm alive. So this one guy is like, hey, come to my house. So he brings him to this club for people that are like him that have been out adventuring, doing things for the greater good for the crown. Um, and now they're just kind of there and like maybe things have changed for them, whatever. And they have this club that they can retreat to called the Adventurers Club. I think similar to like the modern day Explorers Club in that you have to be like you can't just join you have to be kind of invited or like you have to have done something to further scientific research something like that so it's similar to that so Bennett is set out on this quest to find out the truth get his journals back and prove that he is the one that wrote all of these books so Bennett hasn't really been out in society a lot because he's been exploring Africa and Flip has been out in society and she is like I said quite proper seeming and Bennett is the opposite <laughs> he is not proper at all and between the two of them there's like he is pushing he's like I want to sleep with you and she's like is that a compliment you know you have to court me properly so he of course is never able to do quite do that he is kind of all over the place he's very much an explorer and that he's kind of wild and adventurous and stuff like that and at first I didn't think I was gonna like flip because she was so like proper but then I was like you know what no she's actually fun but also there's nothing wrong with saying that you want to be treated right by a man. Hey girl. So I really enjoyed it. I liked how it played out. For parts of it, Flip knows that she's falling for Bennett, but she's afraid that she's not adventurous enough for him. And you see her come out of her shell and start like doing things that are like adventurous and like a little bit wild. And he has the same fears, but he's also like could I just stay with her? Like, could we just sit in a house in England together? And it's both of them coming to those realizations. And I just, I loved it. I thought it was great. I'm going to read the other books in this series because we do meet some interesting characters in the Adventurers Club. And I'm interested to see who her sister ends up with. Um, I don't know if she gets a book or maybe they'll just tell us, but I'm super curious about that as well. But all in all, I liked this a lot. And I, I really liked Suzanne Enoch. Her books are great. Like, yes, they are. Okay, the next one that I read is The Truth About Lord Stoneville by Sabrina Jeffries. So I know that I like Sabrina Jeffries, but I have mostly read The School for Heiresses and now the, mm, I don't know what the series is called, but it's like A Duke for Diana and um, What Happens in the Ballroom, like whatever that series is. So I have slowly picked up the entire Hellions of Halstead Hall series, but I have not started reading it, so I did. So in this one we are following Oliver, who is Lord Stoneville, and Maria. Maria is an American in England who is looking for her fiancé, who um, owns like half of her shipping company basically, and she's looking for him because he's gone missing in England and her dad has just passed away and everything is all tied up so she needs him to come back home. So 
Oliver and his family are called in front of their grandmother for a family meeting, and she says that they all have to marry within the year, or she's going to leave her fortune to this, like, ridiculous cousin that they all hate. So he decides he's going to trick her and bring in someone that is totally unsuitable. So him and Maria meet when her cousin goes into a brothel and steals someone's satchel, and she pulls a sword on him, and basically he's like, I'm not going to turn you over to, like, Bow Street or whatever, but what I need you to do is pretend to be my fiancé to trick my grandmother. So she kind of begrudgingly agrees to this because she's like, you know what, if you're going to help me find my missing fiancé, like, I guess I can help you. Um, also, nobody wants to hang. So they end up going out to Halstead Hall, which was the site of his parents' death years ago. So it's been closed up. So they go out to Halstead Hall, and the grandmother doesn't really seem to like her, but everyone else kind of maybe isn't 100% sure, but they do kind of like her. And they're Americans, so they have no idea. Like, they talk about um, family members fighting in the American Revolution where um, grandmother's son or brother passed away and just, like, they don't know what fork to use, all kinds of stuff like that. And it is fun. And Oliver and Maria do have some great banter. Maria does not back down. She, they both have the too much gene, okay? Like, they are both so extra. Like, this girl was looking for her fiance, so she just went across the ocean with her cousin. He doesn't want to get married, so he concocts this whole plot with a fake fiance and everything. But he does do some kind of crappy things where he sort of insinuates that she's a prostitute and things like that. And she studs him straight really fast. I love that about them. They end up going to a Bow Street runner who agrees to help them, but he does not like Lord Stoneville because a lot of people think that Lord Stoneville killed his parents. So there is just a lot going on. The kind of big movement scene is when she does find her fiancé and we find out exactly what is going on and everything. Like, I ended up really enjoying this one. I thought it was good. I thought it moved pretty quickly. Like, once we got past the initial, like, the meeting stage, it moved pretty quickly. It was really good. Um, I had started reading it, and I had read, like, the first chapter or two, and I was just, like, not in the mood. But when I picked it back up this time, I did not have that problem. I thought it moved quickly. I liked all the side characters. I'm excited to see the rest of the family and their relationships and see how everything plays out because it was actually pretty fun to get to know everyone, and I ended up really enjoying the book. So, all in all, this was great, and I'm going to continue reading the series. And like I said, like, I don't know why I wait. I know that I like Sabrina Jeffrey's writing. So another good one. And then the last one I have, I don't actually have a copy of, but I did get an arc, and that is How to Tame a Wild Rogue by Julianne Long. This is part of the Palace of Rogue series. Now look, this is like book six. So did I just skip around a whole lot? Yes, but when I got the arc for it, I was not going to not read it. So that's where we are. So in this one, we are following Daphne and Lorcan. So Lorcan is kind of like a pirate, um, like a bad boy type thing. He's got an earring. And like basically everyone in London is afraid of him. <laughs> and they meet because she is like climbing out of a window and he assists her because the barrels that she had piled up are gone. Um, and then the two of them take refuge at the Grand Palace of the Thames at the Tim the Thames the Thames, and they have to pretend that they're married in order to get a room. And the reason that it is such a big deal that they get a room currently is because there's a huge storm coming, and basically London is going to be shut down, and you can't be out in the streets. Um, I don't, I don't know. It rains a lot in London, but neither here nor there. I love like a we're trapped together type of story. So anyway, they're trapped because there's a storm coming. It basically is like, it sounds like a hurricane is coming, but hurricanes don't go to England, so it's it's just a storm. But anyway, they're stuck there. And there is a very quirky cast of characters from the proprietresses of this boarding house, like on down to the guests and the maids and everything. Like, it's a lot of fun. And they are pretending to be in a relationship, but part of the problem with everything is, like, her family is running into a lot of trouble with money, so she was actually working for another family, and the husband was very grabby, which is why she ran away. Her brothers are just gallivanting off in Paris and stuff, like, doing whatever. They don't know about the money trouble, and she knows the girl, the ladies that run this. Um, she knew them a long time ago, and now like clearly their circumstances have changed. Lorcan is home. He is like a pirate basically and he knows their husbands because he was maybe a smuggler. You know there's like kind of a lot of drama there and the two of them are stuck together in this tiny little 
you know, room. I mean, it's probably not that tiny. It's probably like a suite, but still. So they're stuck together. It's forced proximity. Most of the book takes place in the Grand Palace of the Thames. But I think it's so much fun. Like, I love a forced proximity romance. Um, and I love when they just can't leave. Like, we're stuck together. So the furthest you can go is, like, the dining room. Um, but I thought their romance, it was very, like, kind of slow burn. It built up well. I think that their struggles for being together were very valid. And I ended up loving all the side characters. And I just liked how this played out. I quite enjoyed it. I'm going to go back and read the other books. Um, I already know that I love Julianne Long as well. I love her characters. I love how like quirky and fun they can be and I just love how you really just feel like you're in this place when you are reading. So I'm excited to see like the birth of the Grand Palace on the Thames and everything. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So this was another win. I'm very happy with the way that this turned out. I'm very happy that I chose these particular books. Um, I'll be doing this again, I'm sure, because there are so many other authors that I could have chosen to read by. I actually have so many more over here. But yeah, I am very happy with it. I think all three of these were great books, and I will continue reading the series that I started in this video. Um, ideally, it would have been a vlog, but as I've said a lot of times, I am very lazy. But I think that maybe next year at least I will try to start doing more vlogs I guess one of my main issues with vlogs is I am very boring I don't do a lot but I'm gonna try because I love to watch vlogs so anyway that's where we are uh, I recommend all of these books I will be updating as I continue reading these series I think so that is all that I have for you guys today I do hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time bye